Uh, All right, there we go. I'll share some of my work here. Uh, this is the woodland art style here, um, a turtle I did. Uh, it's basically, you'll notice the uh, just the heavy black outlines around all these uh, different shapes. And um, so, yeah, the outline creates the animal. And then uh, there's usually really bright colors within uh, the different uh, shapes with lots of pattern work within them. Um, this one's a good example here. You'll notice yeah, just the different types of pattern work within the arms and like the neck here. Um, and there's yeah different patterns that different artists use. Um, I like to like I've studied uh, Norval Morisot's a lot and use a lot of his pattern work. But there's other artists uh, like Carl Ray um, is a good example who does like really really detailed sort of patterns and it's 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 kind of uh, there's just a lot going on in his his pieces, but it still looks like really beautiful. Uh, whereas Norval Morisot's are a lot simpler um and and rely on colors um more than the actual um i guess line work um but yeah uh it's pretty simple it's all like two two dimensional usually um i started doing sort of 3d trying to get in the 3d world and use shading in a lot of the illustrations um but yeah you'll notice like uh a lot of the, I guess, subject matter is uh, animals or plants in nature, and they usually tell stories, of, like our traditional stories. Um, so this one's, this one here is like a thunderbird and a serpent, which is one of the stories um, of our people. It's, it's uh, based on the uh, seven fire prophecies. Um, so yeah, the thunderbird is a pretty uh, big mytho mytholo mythological creature. Um, that's in uh, a lot of our stories. Um, so that's basically it. Um, so just a few more examples I'll go through and then uh, show you the um, the, uh, the, the, the the beaver we'll be doing today. It's a pretty simple one. Um, really fun, easy to do. Uh, we don't have to do all this. Uh, it went a little crazy with the patterns, but we don't have to do all that pattern work in there. Uh, we'll just be doing the outline, and you can do the pattern work uh, yourself, whatever way you feel like you would like to. Um, but I'll show you just uh, if we get to that part, um, I'll just show you um, how I do it, anyways, and you can follow along too. Um, so, yeah, the beaver represents wisdom. Um, you can read this down here, the beaver represents wisdom because he uses his natural gift wisely for his survival. Uh, the beaver also alters his environment in an environment. Oops, what was that? I think there's a comment from Mally. Um, an environmentally friendly and sustainable way for the benefit of his family to cherish knowledge is to know wisdom. Listen to it with clarity, with a sound mind. Respect your own limitations and those of all your surroundings allow yourself to learn and live by your wisdom so yeah he, he he represents wisdom because he's very resourceful and uses his surroundings to make his own life better in a way um so yeah we'll get started with drawing i'll switch over to my document camera here just to give me a couple of seconds to hook it up all right, stop sharing and set this. Oh, let's turn it on. There we go. All right. 
Um, I don't know my sketchbook with me, so I only have this uh, long paper, but it should be okay. Hopefully, anyways. Yeah, that'll look good. That'll be fine. Okay. Uh, all right, so I will just get started. With, uh, so we'll just start off with, um, I guess, his head. Uh, I just usually choose a, a recognizable shape within his body and then just work my way from there. Um, so I'll use my paper like this. I think would probably be best. Um, so his head's on the right side. So we'll just lightly sketch out the shape. It's kind of a circle, oval, just a light oval shape. Start out with that. Try to draw as lightly as possible so you can erase it. I'll just be drawing a little bit darker so you can see the lines um, within the line paper here. Uh, let's try to get it something like that, just an oval shape. And try to draw it to the right of the page because we'll be drawing the body all over here. Um, and then we can, once we have that, circle drawn in we could uh, just draw in the shape of the ears which are just two sort of rectangles josh can you color it a bit harder because it's a bit blurry okay i think um we um, yeah if you um make your pencil a little bit harder we'll be able to see a bit better okay That, is that okay? Just like that. Yeah, a couple of the kids say they can't see very well, and I'm not sure why. I can see okay, which is um, if, maybe if you turn the light off, that's better. Yeah. Um, that's better. I can see fine. Okay. All right, so we got the head there. Um, we'll just uh, start drawing the body. Uh, so we will try to just get the whole shape of the body going in. Um, so we will just, it's kind of just a big circle shape. So we'll just draw the top of the body. It starts at the side of his head here and then just goes in a big circle. Sort of all the way. Um, just around like this. That's all right. So, yeah, there you have the back side of his body drawn in there, and then we could. Work in just the bottom, so it curves around, comes up, and attaches here, touches the side of his face here. So just sort of work it up like that. It's kind of like a big uh, bean. Um, so yeah, we got the whole body where you can turn. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. Is that better or is it still blurry? Good now. Yeah, I'm seeing it okay. Uh, if you leave it, I think it's when you're moving your hand quickly, Josh. I'm not sure. Is the light on it? Yeah, the light's on. Maybe try with the light off. Okay, it's pretty dark in this room. Then. Mm, 
that's really grainy. Okay, the light's a little bit better. I'm not, sh I really am not sure. It, that, that's better, yep. Okay, I'll just try to work really slow. Try to make just very small movements. All right. All right, so we got the body, um, do the tail. So I try to make him sort of in the shape of a circle. So you could even just continue the circle shape all the way around to get the shape of the tail. It doesn't go all the way around. It sort of just goes to about here and then just sort of curves around and goes back to the end of his body. Um, so yeah, it widens, it's a bit wider at the end, and then uh, it goes thinner uh, near the start there. But yeah, I could kind of see it all makes an entire circle. If you connect the line here. Um, so, if everyone's caught up, we can... Just start filling in the, the legs. So we'll start with uh, his big back leg here. It just starts up here. And it has a big curve in it. And then just it breaks through this line here. And then just comes back around. So we will be erasing this line. So just use it as reference to get the shape of the body. So something like that. We could erase this line now if we want to. Mine's a little bit thick, so I'm just going to erase that. There we go. A little bit thinner. All right, it's fuzzy. Um, we try to turn more lights on in the room here, but it doesn't seem like there's much here. Uh, Josh, can you move the drawing up a little because some of the uh, tools are in the way. So if you move it up so the kids can see the tail. Yeah. Is that right, Gabriella? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if you zoom out just a touch there. Actually, that's better. That's much better for the fuzziness too. Okay. Much better. Okay. All right, so we got one of the legs drawn in. Um, we can uh, move on to his front leg here. So that's kind of like an oval shape. Starts around here. And then it's just an oval shape. And it breaks through this line here. And then just curves a bit at the end. There's a little pop. And then we could just erase. erase this line in the middle. And something like that. And then uh, he has another back leg just behind this one so it's just another paw comes out like this so that's his back leg on the other side of his body 
and then his other front leg. Starts about here. Um, I'm just checking to see if everyone, everyone's okay in the chat. Looks like it. Okay, so left arm starts about here, comes down, circles around here. Okay, so I can just I think that's yeah, that's all his body. We can break down the lines. I'll just I'm just gonna clean up my line work a bit with my eraser. It's a little bit messy. So let's erase these lines and sort of uh, go over them again a little bit cleaner. Yeah, maybe or sorry, Josh. Maybe once you've um, completed that little bit, if you could stop and have the kids um, just get caught up, and maybe put as you normally do your Instagram, which I follow every day to see what you've added, as well as the word for Beaver, the Anishinaabe and Ojibwe word. That would be awesome. All right, so it's right over here. His name is Amik Sestanay, M I K. And if you ever want to pluralize um, a word, you just usually add um, ag to the end. But macuck, and usually when the g is at the end of the word, it sounds like a, a k has the k sound. Um, and there might sometimes you also add another letter in there, depending on the word. There might be a w in here. I'd have to check for sure. So it'd be on the clock. That sounds better. Um, I feel like that would be the correct smelling, but I don't know for sure. Um, there's different different rules sometimes for different words, but generally the rule is you just add the ag, and I guess depending on the uh, ending letter of the word, you add a w in there. I'll we'll have to just check up on that. Um, oh yeah, my Instagram handle. It's just uh, this recently changed it. it used to be GMPS nine 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 nine. Now it says the uh, Mangishik. Um, Mangishik. Uh, it means uh, good day, you know, Jibwe, Um It's spelled a little bit differently. Um, it, it usually would be, um, I guess, in the correct smelling, in the Fieri uh, method, it would be uh, Minogizhik. Um, and Gizhik would be G I I Z H I G. Um, but my grandma, since she uh, is like, um, she she only grew up uh, just speaking the language. She never um, learned how to write it out in the English uh, with the English alphabet. 
Um, so when she gave me my name, she just wrote it out uh, this way. And now it's pronounced Mangijik instead of uh, just instead of uh, Minogijik, just because that's that's how she thought it'd be spelled um, using English using the English uh, uh, alphabet. Um, give me the page over a little bit this way. This way. That's uh, M A N G E S H I G. I don't know if you can see it. So students, do you want to let us know when you're ready to move forward and Josh can do the next step for us? So yeah, I just I just looked online and uh, yeah, the plural spelling would be on the clock with the W in there. That would be beavers. Ooh. All right, everyone's good, looks like. So we shall um, just break it down into smaller uh, shapes within the body. So there's a line going from the back of his, his front arm to right about here on his back. And it just curves slightly like that. And then there is one separating his belly from his back. It just goes from this leg to that line. Just do it. All right. And then we could uh, fill in uh, the eyes. He's got a couple of eyes and a nose. Teeth. Uh, it's just uh, has to his eyes closed. You could draw them open if you want. Just sleeping. And then he's got a triangle nose near the bottom. Like that, and he's got two big front teeth. You just draw a square and then just a line right through the middle. That's uh, that's how you draw a beaver. Um. We could also add in his little claws now on each of his paws. Those two four little spikes. Just like that. If you can see, let's see. Mm -hmm. Little little spikes. Like a little comb. Do that for all four of his paws. Okay. 
And that's done. Just gonna clean up some of these lines here. Um, yeah, and there's the outline of your beaver. And then once everyone's ready, um, we can move on to the next step which would be just uh, creating the uh, emphasizing lines um, just within the lines we already have drawn. So How's everybody it. feeling? Can you just say, yes, I'm ready for the next step in the chat, just so Josh knows you're ready? And Josh, it was good to read Sigrid's comment that now after doing a couple of your um, style of art, she understood what the emphasizing lines were for. That was really cool to share. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and at the same time, they aren't really required. Um, I guess different artists do like draw differently. Uh, for me, I, I like to do it this way, just so, just so you have a better idea of how it will look in the end. And it, it makes it easier to fill in uh, with the marker as well. But um, yeah, like um, yeah, different artists draw different different ways. Um, for me, this works the best. Um, and you may find a different way you like to draw um, in time. But uh, yeah, this is just one technique that I like to use. I guess. Uh, so. Yeah, I'll just start with uh, just pick any shape in here, and then we'll draw um, just that 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 extra line within uh, within the line we already have drawn, just to give it that extra weight. And And yeah, if, if um, you already have it drawn on one side of the line, you don't have to do it on the other side because that'll just make it look um, a little too thick uh, in certain areas. And so you would just want to keep it looking sort of consistent. It's also good to have different line weights as well so it gets a little thinner in the middle and thicker on the other side, which is just good for it. Uh, gives your drawing character. Um, you don't want everything to be looking all the same. Well, depending on your style too. Uh, there's, there's artists who, who uh, just use the same line weight throughout the entire drawing, usually. And um, that also can look really cool too. So if you want to do that that, that way, um, that's also um, doable. There's no right way to make artwork. Uh, this is just um, what I like to do. I like to have like a variety, or just if it's too if it's too similar for me, it it um, I don't like I don't personally like the way it looks. A little puzzle. <laughs> That's good. All right, so I'm just working my way through here still. Thank you. 
We can always tell when they're drawing and really happy to be um, drawing, Josh, because they're quiet in the chat. <laughs> the last session, they were super, super chatty because they were excited about seeing a jellyfish, but here they're um, really you know, just so on task, which is great. <laughs> That's cool. You got to see a jellyfish. <laughs> If you're ever in the in Vancouver, there's a really cool, um, I guess, aquarium in Stanley Park. You should definitely check out. They have a bunch of jellyfish there. That's that's where we connected. Oh, really? Yeah, but their jellyfish tank it doesn't have internet access, so they showed us the webcam. Okay. Yeah, so it was really they liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's that was always my favorite thing to see there. It's all the jellyfish. So interesting. Such interesting creatures. Um, yeah, that's basically that stage. I'm just giving you guys a second to uh, just finish that. If you want, you could even add, I don't think I have um, fur in this drawing, but if you want, you could add fur as well. So I'll just, I'll just add some fur on his back, just to spice, spice things up a little bit. So it's just like little sort of waves. Go on his back. Like that. Yeah, once they're all, once they're all done this step, um, we'll be moving on to the marker stage and just filling in between the lines. I have a black sharpie. If you don't have a sharpie or a marker, you can use pencil crayon as well, or just fill it in with a pencil. But um, I like to use marker just because it is very dark um, and it's good when you're scanning uh, images um, to have a really black, uh, really black line. Because um, when you're editing it, you want it to be as contrasting as possible. Um, from the page. Just, um take my marker and draw it in between the two lines as best I can, trying to stick within them. 
And uh, let's take your time with this. Just go nice and slowly and try to get your lawn work as clean as possible. Because um, if you mess up with the marker, you can't erase it. Uh, so yeah, that's why I do the two lines. Because um, it makes it easier to just draw within within the lines and not sort of screw up. It's good to have that um, sort of guideline for your eyeballs. Helps with the hand-eye coordination. Do you use a finer Sharpie for the claws and things, Josh? Yeah. Um, usually, I will have a finer Sharpie. But um, I haven't had one in a while. I haven't, I haven't drawn with so much in a while. Um, it's cause I, That's because you've gone digital. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I usually buy microns. They're these uh, really expensive markers that use India ink, which is, um, it doesn't bleed as much. With these Sharpies, you'll notice, depending, I guess, on the paper, like the ink will sort of bleed out. Um, but with the- Josh, do you have that beaver picture on Instagram? Gabriella's wondering. Uh, no, I don't. I was just using it for these sessions. Cool. I was gonna put it in the book. Well, maybe if you guys share your beaver pictures with Josh, he'll put them on Instagram. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I can, uh, I could share them all and make a post on Instagram if I get a bunch of pictures sent through. People really enjoy seeing your drawings. Gabrielle is going to put it on her Instagram too. Mm -hmm. cool. Um, so yeah, um, there's there's a variety of uh, markers you can get with different sort of fine tips. Um, you should go buy like points. Um, so this one would be like a two, and then there's a one that's a bit thinner, and then there's like a point eight, and then a point five, and a point zero one. And the point zero one is almost like a, it's pretty much like a pencil sort of line you could get lines like really really thin and that's what i use for filling in the detail work and yeah yeah it uses a different ink it's called india ink which um, doesn't bleed as much but those markers are usually like five dollars each so it can be pretty pricey if you're buying Bunch, but it's definitely worth it. The quality. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, so I'll follow this sort of process pretty much with any sort of medium they use. Um, with painting as well, it's pretty much the same thing. I'll draw on the canvas uh, the basic outline and then just um, instead of using a marker, I'll use a paintbrush with black uh, paint. And then, yeah, same with digital artwork. I'll, I'll use a different brush, like a, a, there's a pencil brush you could use on there. And I'll just draw, yeah, draw the pencils sort of with that. And then move to a different layer and then draw over that with a, a brush that looks more like a marker. And yeah, the style would look really good um, for coloring books as well. I keep getting asked to make coloring books, which I haven't done yet. But something I want to do, should do soon. Once you I've got the black on mine, outlined, so. Just kind of want to color it any way you, you can. So yeah, I usually just start out by doing the um, heavier black outline, and then I'll do like the smaller details till the end. And then uh, if I have my other markers, I would switch to the thinner one, and then use that to fill in the smaller details. But, um, I don't have that marker right now, so I'll just use this one. I'll just, I'll just use this a little bit. You could use this one just a little bit lighter and try to get this thin as line as you possibly can, but it's not always possible. Well, that's okay. Sorry if my hands are covering the page that I'm trying to keep my hand from blocking it. And the teeth as a nose. Um, I don't usually like with the smaller details. I don't usually add a another line to it um, because they are they're a little bit finer, um, and you don't really need to add that line width. Um, you could just sort of just draw right over top of that one line you have. Yeah, and and if you want to turn the page as well when you're drawing, I turn I turn my page quite a bit too, uh, just because I can't. Some like some curves are really hard to draw. Um, like usually when I'm drawing with with, uh, with a camera here, I'll 
have my page turning all over the place. I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible for you guys, but that's uh, also a good tip. If if you want to turn your page to it, so we get a better um, angle to draw a certain line, that uh, definitely helps out quite a bit. All right. It's all outlined. And then uh, if there's any pencil marks, you could go and erase them. It won't. Depending on the marker, it won't smudge. Some markers smudge, which is good. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. I usually have uh, left-sided ears in my drawings, too. Definitely adds character. It's just like in real life, not everything's uh, perfectly symmetrical. Um, so, yeah, this is the end of the next step, or the last step. Um, and we can move on to the next step, which would be coloring. Uh, I think we got six minutes left. We can just go over uh, just some basic patterns to show you. And... Uh, I'll leave this one up to you guys, whatever you want to, whatever kind of pattern work you want to fill it in with. Um, decide on your own, on your own time. Take you some sort of markers, pencil crayon, you know, markers. Uh, crisscross, crisscross on the tail. Okay, yeah, let's do a crisscross. So I will just start out. By doing the just a line within uh, the blackout line we have, 
it goes all the way around the shape And then I'll usually uh, draw my first line somewhere in the middle, uh, just on an angle. Just go straight across like that. And then I'll just uh, draw lines. Add it. Like that, and then start working on the other side. I'm just yeah, trying to keep the same angle all the way through it. So there's your Chris, and then we can do our cross. Um, so we're just going to try to make an X. So we'll just pick a line. Let's do this one here. We'll make an X with it. So let's draw a line. Come in the opposite direction. That looks so great. Like that. Let me just do the same thing. So students, just so that you know, when Josh is um, doing that, we have the resources listed, um, the pattern and the instructions, and a copy of Josh's Beaver listed on our resource page. So that's there for you for inspiration and if you want to revisit that. And we also, I think we also have the, um, the wolf and one other creature, the eagle is also on the resource page. 